This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! This was the first time I'd ever woke with such clarity. It was 5.59, just moments before my alarm would go off. That's me! I always wake up right before my alarm goes off. Like, always. I was amazed at the precision of my internal clock. I had made in preparations for the next day of school before I went to bed. I changed quickly and descended to the deserted tower lower floor. The deserted tower. I'm here to save you, Rapunzel! It appeared that my mom was still asleep. Neither breakfast nor lunch was ready. Yesterday, I just unilaterally declared that I would be leaving early today, so it couldn't be helped. I slavered jam on some bread and tossed it with some instant cocoa. Just as I was finishing up breakfast, Mom rose groggily from her slumber. When I get bread and jam, I always know what I'm getting and I'm always pleased. <laughs> Answering bluntly, I picked up my bag and stood after stuffing two slices of bread down my throat. If I waited here to make my lunch, then it would end up being her being the same as usual. If I did that, it would raise the chances of me running into Rena and Mion on the way. Yes, from today onwards, I was going to go to school alone. Yeah, I think Mom should talk about last night. Yes, 100%. I took the thousand yen bit for mom and slipped it into my pocket. I have no reason to tell her every little detail now, do I? Finding it difficult answering the onslaught of questions, I made an annoyed face. It's not that I didn't trust my parents. I just couldn't rely on them. It's kind of the same thing! <laughs> They couldn't help me. I could only hope that they didn't get involved. It was safer that way. Bro, you need help. My mom's annoying voice was cut off by the slam of the door. For the first time since I moved here, I headed down the road to school alone. Rena's like, what a coincidence! I'm here too! Up until now, I had always walked down the same path at the same time each day. So I always met with the same people at the same places. But today was different. I didn't meet the people I normally would, and nobody was at the places where I would have normally met them. Of course, Rena wasn't in the spot when we usually met, and wasn't there wasn't anyone at the spot when we would have met up with Mion. The length of the tree's shadows, the morning air, and the brightness of the sun? It was a completely different type of morning than what I was used to. Without a doubt, it felt strange. It left me with the impression that I had destroyed the illusion Hinamizawa had set up for me before it had enough time to prepare for all the props needed to deceive me. The person who called out to me was somebody we always passed as we were taking a walk along the edge of the fields. Their name was... Uh, I forget. Of course, this wasn't the spot when we usually passed each other. I threw out a random excuse. I was being asked the same type of questions my mom was asking, so I answered them in the same uninteresting and vague manner. It wasn't funny being asked about where Rena was each time I passed by someone. Everyone thinks we're dating, bro. But maybe it was to be expected. It was because for so long we were always together so amicably. Even I felt that I, if I let my guard down, we could still be fr- Stop it, KG. Don't think about that anymore. You spent all day yesterday thinking about how dangerous it was to go soft, didn't you? Beep, 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 beep! A car horn blared up from out of nowhere. Even though I was walking lost in thought, the horn was way too close. A mechanical behemoth barreled at me from behind, catching me completely off guard. By the time I turned around, the van's hulking chassis was almost on top of me. I'd seen plenty of cars veer off to the opposite shoulder to avoid pedestrians, but this car was doing the complete opposite. It felt like... It felt like there was somebody on the opposite shoulder and the van was swerving in my direction to avoid them. That blissfully ignorant train of thought delayed me from realizing something much, much more important. That large mass was hurtling right at me. Was it going to hit me? The inside of my head instantly flooded with a painfully cold liquid. 
In that moment, the scene before me. No, time itself had frozen. In the silence of the frozen moment, I compared the van, so close that I had no way to dodge it, and my body. The upper half twisted awkwardly in order to look behind me. There was no way I could get out of my way, out of the way in my current position. If I lost focus here, the moment would unpause, and I could possibly be plowed over, caught in this silly pose. Bend my upper, upper body towards the paddy by the f side of the road. If I bent far enough, I'd get away with just being hit by the side view mirror. As soon as that thought crossed my mind, the temporal stasis was shattered by the deafening sound of the van. The side mirror struck my shoulder, sending me spinning off through the air like a top locked into my contorted position. What the heck was driving this van? <laughs> like Zoink Scoob, I could have sworn that the Scooby Stacks were this way. <laughs> Splat! <laughs> Sent tumbling through the air, I crashed into the muddy paddy by the side of the road. My entire body was soiled and drenched. But the choice I had made in that instant was unmistakably for the best. Dude, we're in the Matrix now. I was covered in mud, but when the alternative was being hit by the car, it was the closest I could be to being unscathed. Has the car never heard of braking for pedestrians? Rising from out of the paddy, I had enough I had enough in me to glare over at the stopped van and yell profanities at the driver. I'm not sure if he was able to see me, but the van sped off suddenly. I couldn't help but continue yelling out profanities. The disgrace from being covered in mud hurt me more than any physical wounds. I slogged through the muddy paddy and made my way back onto the road. Shit! I'll track you down and sue you! If I go looking for a van, I'm sure to find it in this little village. The path I was on had rice paddies on either side, and it had become so narrow that one car could barely fit through. It wasn't a place you could tear full speed down in a car, let alone pass by pedestrians. Not only was it a narrow road, but the car just now was closer to my side of the road than the other when it passed me. Even as I cursed, I was desperately trying to suppress the dark cloud roiling up inside me. Roiling? This wasn't just a hit and run. That car just now was trying to run me over, wasn't it? Thinking back, I did feel like there had been a car creeping up on me slowly for a while. That's right. As soon as I'd parted ways with that person taking a walk, I had the feeling the whole time. If it had wanted to pass me, then it had no shortage of chances. Normally, I would have felt suspicious and turned around sooner. But I was lost in thought, and I was now kicking myself for not realizing it was there sooner. And then, when the path became narrow and there was no one in sight, he floored it. If I had hesitated for even a moment, the end result would have been no laughing matter. As the adrenaline rush from nearly being run over subsided, and the realization of just how terrifying the preceding events were sunk in, there was no doubt about it. That van was intentionally trying to hit me. Who was driving that? Cold, vicious sweat seeped from my scalp and slid down my back before dribbling off. I struggled to avoid falling into a panic. There was still the possibility that this really was just an accident. Calm down, Keiji. But also, don't be so naive, Keiji. Being that lax will get you killed next time. You need to always be on your toes. Don't give them any openings. If my enemy was really out to kill me, then next time, they would use a more reliable method. If that time came and I was acting like I was now, getting covered in mud was the price I had paid for my own naivete. Covered in mud, but without injury. Not even a sprain. I guess this is what you would call the silver lining. I began walking again, this time cautiously. I wouldn't even show a hint of carelessness. I had suspected only Rena and the others up until now. No. It was because I had suspected them that I had believed there were no more other enemies. Uisi-san had said so, didn't he? There was the possibility of a village conspiracy. Was I really mired so deeply into the situation that I had no choice but to try and carry on as usual? Wouldn't it be safest just to hold myself up in my house? That's not going to go over well either. But the moment I abandoned my regular routine, everyone around me would abandon theirs as well. That was just too horrifying of a thought. I recalled the tales Uisi-san told me of when Hinamizawa was still called Onigafuchi. A frightening tale of an entire village of demons hunting their prey, surrounding them, and eating them alive. One must not interfere with the demons. 
One must pretend not to see it. The enemy were numerous, the whole village. The villagers, with their unwavering faith in the curse, would do nothing to help me. It's ironic that you had to fall into the rice paddy to avoid a van, because, dude, you've lost the plot! Oh! And the plot has lost me. The strong sudden flash of sunshine made me slightly dizzy. I had no idea what was going on anymore. When I suspected it was the work of man, I would catch a glimpse of Oyashiro-sama's curse. And when I suspected it was Oyashiro-sama's curse, someone would poke their head out. Was the, What was coincidence? What was intentional? Who was my enemy? Who was just a bystander? No. What I really truly wanted to know was... How did I end up with the proverbial bullseye painted on my back? Eventually, an answer in a form I could understand will appear. I don't care what will happen, when that will happen, because until then, I cannot die. That alone fueled my resolve to fight and keep, my, uh, keep me alive. This kid's crazy. And now he's going to get his own weapon. What could go wrong? I remembered seeing the metal bat in the gym storage shed, but there was a padlock on the door barring my entry. At the very least, I wanted to get my hands on it before everyone else arrived at the school. I circled around the school grounds impatiently. But all I could find were things like pieces of lumber, nothing that I could bring into the classroom easily. Then, I had an epiphany. I should search inside the classroom. If it was something in the classroom to begin with, then it wouldn't be a problem. I could tell that everyone's indoor shoes were still in their lockers. Good thing I came early. Nobody else was here yet. I wondered, what could I find in the classroom? I didn't think I could find an especially effective weapon like a bat. But it couldn't be helped at this point. Until the gym shed storage was open, I needed to find a substitute. A lingering hint of naivety whispered that there was no way I'd be attacked at school. But such soft ideas would no longer protect me. To think that they were slowly migrating their way into parts of my life that I had once thought were impenetrable. In the worst case, my own house might not be safe anymore. That was an incredibly frightening thought. But I had believed that not considering the worst case scenario would have been even more frightening. Anyways, I will survive. So long as I lived, then I would definitely be able to hear this labyrinth of nonsense. Definitely. I will be able to escape from it. My exploration of the classroom came to an impasse. That much was to be expected. There was no way that anything that could be a weapon was in the classroom. In case of emergency, there was probably nothing I could do but swing my own chair around. My gaze landed on the lockers that had come to be used for personal storage. The locker that Mion used to store her pile of games was among them. There was one for each person in the class all lined up. Of course, there was one for me as well. Oh yeah, there was supposed to be still be a tracksuit in my locker. Seeing me covered in mud would be strange. I should go change later. But first, I needed a weapon. If one of my classmates came, it would be hard to rummage through all the lockers. I swiftly began opening lockers one by one. They were all mostly just filled with things like gym clothes, personal items, and umbrellas. An umbrella? If I couldn't find anything better, then this would have to be my weapon. I was about to give up on finding anything decent when I opened a locker that held exactly what I wanted. It was, without a doubt, a metal bat. It was well-worn and pretty beat up, but there was no doubt it was usable. In that locker that reeked of mold, there also hung a baseball uniform. It was probably the locker of a student in a peewee league or something like that. If that was the case, then he'd probably ask for it back. At the time, I could hear the voices of the children scuffling their way noisily in from the hallway. Amongst them, I could make out Rika-chan and Satoko. Ooh, this is a catchy music. That was way too many R's. I nonchalantly held the bat I was holding behind my back. With that said, I began taking off my clothes. Satoko began to blush, just as I expected her to. You can't do that here. Go to the bathroom. Rika's just like, I don't care. This is fascinating. 
しつけがなってないと思うぞ。Dude, you don't strip in the middle of a class in front of middle school girls. Go, go to the bathroom, dude. 男子は更衣室がないんだから諦めろ。There's a bathroom for the boys? As the Toko Fane discussed, she went into the hall, still blushing. Conversely, Rika chan continued to stare at me, preparing to change. Rika chan mo ready nara. Higai o mitter na yoku nai to mo zo. Boku a ready ja nai des kara i no des. No, that's weird, Rika. She deliberately pouted and looked at me with upturned eyes. Ja, Rika chan mo. Ima kara ready da. Ready nara. Shikata ari masen des. Rika chan, appearing to be satisfied with being considered a lady, made her way to join Satoko in the hallway.、Uh, if Satoko's a lady, then、uh, <laughs> Rika 100% is a lady, because she is far more mature. Just as I breathed a sigh of relief, Rika chan stopped suddenly and turned back toward me. It seemed that Rika chan had noticed the bat. Oh, Rika, you're so innocent. She was talking like an old lady, despite her appearance. After saying that, Rika chan started to leave again, but stopped and looked back at me once more. It seems she already knew I took it out of somebody's locker. Okay, she knows too much. There was no name on the locker door. I didn't know whose bat it was, but I would be borrowing it until they complained. It wouldn't be for long, just until the gym storage shed was opened. After quickly changing into the track shoot, the track shoot I checked the time. I still had plenty of time before class began because I came so early. I took the bat in one hand and went out to the schoolyard. That was, of course, to practice my swing. I needed to make it known that I would always have a bat on me so I could practice my swing. At some point, the sunlight had begun even stronger. Disregarding my classmates as they made their way to school, I took my position in the shadow of the school building. I wonder if this is Re、uh, Rena's bat. Because we saw Rena using a baseball bat in Keiichi's imagination. I wasn't the academic type, and I wasn't much of an athletic either. I might get muscle pain if I suddenly started swinging. I should at least start out with some warm ups. I doubt anyone would think I was doing something out of the ordinary, which was the exact opposite of my actual mental state. I gripped the bat and swung lightly. The bat was by no means light. The weight would make it a reliable weapon when I needed it to be. Of course, I could only pray that the moment I needed to use this as a weapon would never come. Just carrying it around could deter attacks against me. At least that's what I hoped. Hey, girls! Hey, John! What are you doing? Being bombarded with such a hysterical voice, I jumped. <laughs> Sorry, Keiichi didn't make my backyard baseball team. He was not an option. <laughs> Maybe next season. It was Rena and Mion. World Series is in a week. I'm, I'm a chonker. Ah, Sidanakataro. Jitsa Sandambarananda. Motimoch de tap tap nandazo. Oh, 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 who would go? Motimoch de tap tap. Lena, in the sozo snuck to To disrupt Rana from imagining something that vulgar, I ruffled her hair messily. Jama. <laughs> What are we, the Glee Club? No. <laughs> Keiji's five years too old. I don't know. How old is Keiji supposed to be in this? I thought he was like 17, 16 or 17. That's like six years too old for that. <laughs> oh, he's supposed to be 15? Interesting. <laughs> Our, our, please tell me our baseball team name is the Demons. That would make perfect sense. Seems they've already taken me for a baseball nut, but oh well. Well, if I really did make it to the championship, it would be a cinch. After all, I'd be the pitcher and the catcher. I'd pitch the ball, 
then run past the ball I just threw and change over to being the catcher in a burst of super incredible explosive speed. That's what Bugs Bunny did. I laughed dryly at the ludicrous image. Coming back to my senses, I smashed the bat against the ground. <laughs> I pounded the ground over and over. With each impact, the reverberation traveling out through the bat stunned my hands. If they smile at me like that, I'll... I'll... Ugh! Don't allow anyone close to me. Don't trust anyone. Don't matter how many... No matter how many times I tell myself that, if they make me smile like that, I'll... Ugh! Build an army. Trust nobody. Fire Emblem for Game Boy Advance. I already knew quite well that there were demons dwelling in my smiling friends, but I just couldn't believe it. Did that kind of split personality really exist? Like how Rena confessed to the Doctor? Were they simply being possessed by Oyashiro-sama? In other words, did a supernatural being like Oyashiro-sama really exist? And was it possessing everyone to try and kill me? He's going to be allowed to join back her baseball regardless with that reaction. I don't know. You gotta be mentally sound if you want to join my backyard baseball team. That is part of their qualifications. Yeah, that would be wonderful. If only everyone were actually my friends all along, and then everything was just all Oyashiro-sama's fault. My cage the I yelled out, drawing out all the power from the pit of my stomach and raised the bat violently into the air. As I screamed out with all my might, I beat the metal bat into the ground over and over. That poor ground, what did it do to you? With every impact, my weakness was being beaten down. Smash! Forget. Smash! Don't be soft. Smash! Know your enemy. Smash! Like hell, I'd let the herd kill me. My shoulders heaving up and down from my ragged breathing, I heard the first bell ring just as I calmed down. Can I bring this into class? No. I gasped with a sudden realization. That was the final bell. As I felt all of the tension drain from me, I let out a deep breath. My mind was in a muddled state for much of the entire day. I didn't feel like I was awake, but I didn't feel like I was asleep either. I couldn't say it felt especially comfortable, but it felt like kind of a relief that the sanctity of the school was part of my daily life that had yet to be violated. How long would I have to keep on living like this? I could only grit my teeth and bear it as this living hell slowly gnawed away at me. The sound of Rena's voice brought me back to my senses. Everyone is moving their desks together, as usual. That's right, it was happy fun club time. But I had no intention of taking part. I haphazardly stuffed the contents of my desk into my bag as I prepared to go home. It was a weak-handed gesture to avoid having to actually say, I'll be going home now. To kind of play oh, sorry. Yeah. That's very fitting. <laughs> is that a new expression we've seen on me own? Oh, wait, no, this is her hitchhiker pose. That's right. Oh, wait! <laughs> Did her mouth just move? Wait, is there animations if you... Wait, hang on. Mion sounded quite disappointed. That's my memory. Did did she move her mouth? The tone of the words that spilled from my mouth watched Mion's disapproving glare. It felt like the air in the room had dried out. Satoko looked like she was about to say something, but perhaps dissuaded by the mood, she swallowed her words and stayed silent. The console version does have moving mouths. Oh, interesting! Nobody said a thing. I took that to mean that I could leave if I wanted. But the collective gaze of the four of them, like the tiny pins used to mount on an insect on display, held me in place. Rena was the one who cut through the heavy mood. Keichiko, oh, yes, she does! It doesn't Lip sync doesn't match up perfectly, but it's still there. Oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> the, uh, busted! Busted, you figured me out, Rena. Yeah, I don't like playing with girls. She said it in such a melancholic, <laughs> melancholic tone that it sent a wave of pain racing through my heart. If this pain was going to kill me, I wanted it to be the soft part of me that could still feel pain. 
I tore out my chest, violently tearing out at the pins that held me in place. I'd only be hurting myself by saying anything more, so I swallowed my words. Cutting things off there, I turned away and exited the classroom. They didn't speak a word to me as I left. I feel like he should just come clean to them about the stuff that Uisi san told us and what he's feeling, and we can work through it together. Or they'll kill us. Maybe it's not the best idea.